So here we are in the rain on our way to the launch of the Great Exhibition of the North. If you remember a couple of months ago I did a project called My Dog Ate My Wheelchair. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm sure it'll be great. An established artist who's been working in the region for a lot of years. Um, the idea really was that when we heard about the Great Exhibition of the North um, we thought it was a really, really good opportunity to showcase um, the experiences of people who consider themselves different, consider themselves to have a health condition, consider themselves as disabled, um, about their experiences really in the North East, and particularly from an artistic perspective as well. Often you find with disability arts that a, it's a great movement, it's a great thing, it's done a lot for disabled people and the disabled people's movement. But also often you can find that people feel quite ghettoised and often, you know, often people involved in disability arts don't always have a mainstream platform. So we wanted to try and bring that out really and try and get um, some experiences, some day-to-day -day experiences of, of different people, how they experience life in the North East. And to be sort of set up as sort of glimpses really into the lives of people, of some things to do with health conditions, some things that aren't to do with health conditions, just really, you know, kind of day-to-day -day life and glimpses into their lives. So that's what, that's what we did. It was going to be a much larger project, but as with funding, as I'm sure you're all aware, it's going to be quite difficult to come by. So we did a, we did a kind of a smaller project than we first intended to do. Um, and it involved some workshops with, with a group of people who kind of talked about their experiences, talked about the places that they like to visit in the North East, places that were significant for them. And also we used objects as a little bit of a way in um, for people to talk about their day-to-day -day life and things that were important to them as a little bit. The video that is the video that's currently at Nexus, which is opposite in the in the hay market, um, opposite the entrance to Marks and Spencers. Then this one is in Clayton Street. I really like going to China because um, I was like bringing my family here. Um, I also got good memories as well, so I like to bring my dog. Um, my dog before he, before he passed away. It's very, very peaceful. There's not too many people. I think my dream dog would probably be King Charles. King Charles Cavalier. Because they're really small, very cute. Easy to walk as well. And that's my favourite thing to do with this. 
Do you like living in the North East? Yeah, definitely. I'm a proud Geordie. I like how everyone's really friendly and quite happy. Everyone stops to say hello. Even if you don't know them, uh, people still say hi. I love that. I love being a Because I wasn't given help then in, in, in the prime of life, the problems I had then have just been allowed to get worse. And in St Mary's Chapel in Jesmond Dean, and this is where I like to come for walks, to be on my own away from people and cars. And it was on one of these occasions in 2007 where I wrote this poem about being alone and isolation. And this place is a great place to collect your thoughts the memories that were attached to the old days when the car park was up in the market and everything, the, the atmosphere is all gone. Now blows the wind of change through washing summer bows. It's breaths to cool the light, where round the grassy range the sleepy cows do browse. The fact is, I had to look for work when I was in Northwood State look for work. The lantern yellow tops I snuffed and disappeared. The grey paths fade away, and darkly merging cups sheds me its lonely tear. My friend managed to get a job in uh, Vickers or Armstrong or somewhere. I was a defence company in the Tain Valley, and uh, he used to meet me in there every Friday for a drink after work. Uh, he died of drink. Now time stands still, retreat. Under this map, my dreams of fair and lonely pasts. So they are the videos. They're not really, as I mentioned, supposed to be seen quite in quick succession like that. Um, it is supposed to be snippets. And you can see, hopefully, some of the themes. Um, you know, there's the, there's the objects of people's everyday lives. There's the history. There's the connection to the, the locale, the locality. There's the political things that affect people in there. Um, there's some things about people's personal life and family life. So the whole range that I think we've, you know, we've tried to kind of capture in, in a short space. And I would like to say thank you to the participants. Thank you to the participants who are here today. So I can just give everybody a round of applause for that. <laughs> Time and, it, and it was great and we, we made some good connections and it, and it, it was good to do um, but we do recognise that people do give up their time to do that so I appreciate the work you put in as well thanks Dan yeah, it, um, as, as some of you know Neil who's the artist that was working on this unfortunately had a heart attack um, a few weeks ago so he was going to be here t today to talk a little bit more about the artistic element of the of the project but unfortunately he's thankfully he's recovering but mm -hmm. um, he's not at work or doing anything work related so otherwise he would have been here describing the concept in a much more eloquent way and articulate way than I've been able to do that. So I've just kind of opened it up really to see you know those of you many of you have seen that for the first time I think or seeing them all together for the first time participants and other people that have come along to observe people who know disability know people who don't know have that connection so it's just to say you know do you have any comments anything to say any any questions yeah yeah can I just ask, what is the significance of the title? It was when, when we went to put, when we were looking for funding initially, and what we wanted to do, we wanted to have something that sort of didn't stereotype disabled people in a sense of having people, so, so it was sort of a little bit of a kind of a sarcastic sort of way of sort of, you know, the doggy in my homework kind of idea, the dog being the guide dog, the wheelchair being part of it, to kind of say like, you know, there's a bit of humour in here, there's a bit of challenging stereotypes in here, just to kind of play with a well-known phrase really. Because as I mentioned earlier on, we were going to have a much longer sort of project that involved a bit more of a social media campaign, but unfortunately we weren't successful with the funding, so we were able to put on some sort of smaller workshops, we didn't really get the depth that we, that we might have 
might have wanted to go into with people in terms of discussion. Hopefully that's something that we can go on to do now we've done this project, but that's, that's the thinking behind it. To be fair, Victoria, in the spirit of time that you had and the fact that you didn't get the funding, I think, you know, you've done really well to capture mm -hmm. everything yeah. in there. And I think, you know, hats off to Neil, who isn't here, you know, I think a lot of work went in from you and him. So I think, you know, people need to understand that you might not have got the funding, but you did the best with what you had. And I think, you know, seeing what's in front of us people, you know, wouldn't know that you didn't get the funding and that's yeah. testament to both of you really so oh, thank you for that okay. so it's yeah. kind of answered part of it so if you did get some funding what would be the next thing that you would yeah we wanted to involve people in a whole kind of series of workshops and more people as well we didn't really because because the great exhibition of the North was time sensitive in that we had to have something ready for the beginning of the exhibition, it wasn't like we could go back and refine our idea and then respond to sort of like funders' comments. So what we wanted to do is perhaps be a little bit more kind of political, kind of maybe get a little bit more in depth, maybe get to be a little bit more creative as well. Like I say, the participants sort of met over basically two, two, two Saturday mornings and then we had sort of two location shoots really. So. It would have been great to have people, some people couldn't make things because of diary commitments and things, so it would have been much more about depth. And then we would have waited for the themes to come out of that, really, in terms of what people wanted to discuss. Hopefully with sort of more people involved as well, a more range of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Can I suggest, if you ever get any more money, if it was voiced mm -hmm. over, but one of the things it lacks is no actually audio description. Yeah. 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 So it, it, it spoils it to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but you can get the gist of it, but mm -hmm. that audio description would have really... Yeah, sure, we'll mm -hmm. turn it on board, yeah. Thank you. Did you? Oh, you're whispering in your question. sweet nothings. Anybody else, any comments or any... When's the next one? <laughs> When's the next one? Well, yeah, no, that's a that's a work in progress. I mean, we are identified. I mean, that's one of the things that you know, if people think that there's, I mean, we're quite trying to use this as a bit of a pilot now, really, to say that we have worked in a creative way with with a group of people. You know, what more can we do? So, hey, if there's themes and things that you think are missing or that you think we need to explore, you know, either get in touch or put, put your hand up because you know we're ready to take it in different directions and kind of do a new. You know, kind of a new project off the back of this, really. Hopefully, one that can go over a little bit of a longer period of time and can get to know people a little bit more. I think, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think we did do the best with, with what we had in the time that we got to know each other. But often in groups, often you know, kind of in people's life, you know, having that relationship and, and being able to kind of understand people and people understand each other to talk about issues and let that kind of you know explore that and give the time to explore that that would have been you know that would have been quite useful so hopefully and i think even though time. we didn't have a lot of time you people still did get educated by what people said you know there was mm. a lot of discussion behind the film and, and i think that is important the stuff that tasha said was really powerful to me um and I went off and did some of my own research for Tasha mm -hmm. in the hope that kind of society, you know, I'll be able to help society where Tasha can't help them herself. Yes. Just yes. by what she said to me. So I hope more things like that come out for people, you know. Yeah. And I think as well, one of the things that, that was incredible about it was, was the potential of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in that it's, it's a start and it was, what can you do when you get a group of different people in a room and see what happens with a camera in front of them and, and look at what, what's being produced and I think the incredible thing was that we all had a voice yeah. but it was a different voice we came from different backgrounds experience different different areas of how we coped how we don't cope and, and what you know floats our boat as far as you know the, the stuff that we're interested in or we want to further and that was the wonderful thing about it because it was an opportunity for us to be together but to take it on and, and it is almost like you know it's a shame that it's well i don't think it has stopped because i think this is a step to stone into perhaps something you could else you just say it's the beginning of something yeah. special really i guess yeah.
to know. I'm glad that people are want to continue to be involved in the project and hopefully we can you know involve more people and hopefully we can once once the exhibitions um finish running on the 9th of september we will post the videos sort of on our on our on our site um and sort of provide some commentary around those and hopefully we'll engage more people because of course we are aware we work with eight participants that not, don't necessarily represent the whole range of everybody everywhere so um would it be worth if we do like do something mm -hmm. just now would it be worth so like um Throw some wine and cheese in, and perhaps invite. <laughs> <laughs> um, perhaps invite somebody from the arts council, because one of the things I've so I've picked up sitting here is how relaxed everybody was. Now that could have been just they're generally confident, or it could be that so the wine. Well, well, the, the wine, yeah. <laughs> was the wine. Yeah. The other thing I've often wondered, so like, would the arts council perhaps? Have there were enough people interested in perhaps funding some kind of arts program, perhaps drama, because for anybody with any disability or long-term condition, the arts, as in drama, are acting, and I don't mean the Royal Shakespeare Company, but they really do give confidence. And if you can speak, you can go anywhere, no matter what your disability is. So I've often wondered, would this be so like a part of empowerment for the snow or and again i don't think it would be that difficult to get some kind of funding just a thought no it's definitely and and, and, and thankfully we're recording this so i'm not actually <laughs> writing notes so <laughs> <laughs> hopefully i can re i can recap on some speaking of the cameras not the same for me as um speaking to people you know totally different yeah. so speaking in front of people that's easier for me than speaking to one to one yeah it's totally yeah. different for me yeah I think it just lends itself for an opportunity, isn't it? To do it, so where people happen, feel yeah. more comfortable mm -hmm. and think, yeah, we have, we have got something to say. Yeah. And there are mm -hmm. people who might listen to us. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. we don't have to be tutored and we don't have to be sort of nudged into doing or saying things in a certain way. We just be us and mm -hmm. say that yeah. it is whatever for us because that matters. Mm -hmm. And I think that yeah. was the thing about this. Each one of us ended up through the experience thinking, yeah. It, it matters, we matter, mm -hmm. what happens yeah. to us matters, and it's broad and that, isn't it? And there's different means of doing that, because obviously it's quite time intensive and getting people together, people's, you know, commitments, family commitments, health yeah. reasons, doesn't always mean that people can come together. So one of the things that we wanted to do in this project that I think we will follow is people being able to take their own video material and being able to like sort of submit it, so be still part of the project, but not having necessarily yeah. physically go somewhere, or working with partners, you know, project partners, other organisations, who might work with people who might be interested in either sort of facilitating that or joining forces as a part, you know, in a partnership as well to be able to do that. So we can work with different groups of people and in the way that suits them best as well. So, you know, like I said, not assuming that everybody wants to walk and come to disability norm or whatever to yeah. be able to do that. People who, who are more tech savvy, who, who have that, you know, can, can do YouTube and do the videos or people who can take videos for people who, you know, express themselves in different ways as well. So that's, that's definitely a route that we would want to go down as well. But it's all good because you're all saying the same things that hopefully that you know that we want the things that we want to do really yeah. and, the, and the things that we want to look at and i think having it on a platform you know sort of like as a, as a film or something that people can take notice of you know in a way rather than or you know there's this disability art thing again not that i'm you know not knocking that at all in terms of you know kind of what that does for people as well and, and drama and all of that kind of thing but also you know, kind of saying like this is out here on a, a kind of in, in mainstream film, in mainstream art galleries, in mainstream venues that isn't just sometimes, you know, that kind of community element of a gallery or a community element of something. It's like, no, this is actually, you know, this is political, you know, this is personal, this is this is everything that it that it is and, and the people's I lives. I like as well. that it's out there in society and we're not just talking about disability on its own, you know, work out in the community with this project and it, it, it's powerful on its own just doing that because it, it it's all about inclusion sure. rather than just it, disability has its place in a group the way we sort of formed the project but it also is really powerful to have it out in society and prove to society that actually we'll have a voice and actually we might be able to educate other people. Yeah. 
And, and going out to challenge ideas as well, like, you know, making sure it's challenging. And actually, you know, it's, it's often said one of the criticisms of something like disability arts or even kind of, you know, disabled people, you know, kind of fighting that cause is that it's actually, you know, should it really be up to people to actually fight themselves? In a sense, we should actually turn it around on people and it should be actually challenging people's attitudes and behaviours as well. So putting the spotlight not necessarily on disabled people all of the time, but actually putting the spotlight out there and say, let's do something about this as well and, and see what, what people are saying. So that could be another possible angle or a possible avenue as well for, for a future project. People have said, we've seen this, uh, lots of people. Oh, right. I didn't, I haven't seen it myself, but that's good stuff. You know, you see it and that was great. Yeah. So many people have seen it. But I don't know why the other two are. One of the, Market. There's one in, so there's one in, you know, sort of the, the back of Marks and Spencers, you know, sort of where the, the old bus station, not the new bit, not the new uh, bit, the sort of, you know, the, um, yeah, it's the old bit of Marks and Spencers, just there's a little Nexus sort of office there. Oh, the yeah, 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 that you wouldn't really go, I didn't even know it was uh, there until we started talking to them and then I had to go and look. So there's, there's uh, one there. There's one in a unit in Clayton Street, which is opposite Olive and Bean. On the same street, I think, um, on the same street as the Tesco, oh, Tesco, the Black Guards is on that street as well. So, but it's opposite Olive and Bean. It's sort of at the, the side of um, Elgin Square, um, the, the entrance. And obviously, there's one just downstairs playing outside the library. And uh, then the, the longer film has got headphones downstairs, and it's also in the library. So the idea really is, is that people sort of see one and then they follow it around a little bit, like you know, keeping with the Great Exhibition, so of idea on the trail. You know, kind of going out to see things and going to find it and leading to the like, you know, kind of the stories that we saw in the sort of the longer um, videos. As well. Oh, it's come back on, of course, it's come back on and no one's finished anything. Now we're finished, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's you look both. You look good in both lights. Yes, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> you, look a bit, you look brighter in uh, <laughs> in that one. But uh, so yeah, that's that's what our plan is. It's it's been great to have everybody here, and like I say, we're really lucky with the group of people that came together out of a call of just kind of putting it out there and saying, would you be interested in coming and have a chat, really, and meeting some people and bringing along an object that's important to you. I think that's how it kind of all started. So. To get this discussion and to you know to get people you know to, to come along and, and sort of you know give bits of themselves really and their own experiences you know to, to say things about themselves that they might not ordinarily share in different contexts and i think that was quite nice about the space that that we had that people felt that in their own way that they could they could express what they needed to and without that big structure you know people could bring in what they what they wanted to talk about what to do and it could have been something related to their health or an impairment or it could have been nothing to do with that at all and it, it, it's, it's giving people that that freedom really to do that rather than sort of saying we've got this project idea we're going to do it like this um, and, and leaving it open for people to shape the project so we definitely want to do that again and like I say take this as a bit of a pilot to kind of do other things so hopefully lots of other people will see it and it will go beyond the like I say the life of the great exhibition the north once like I say, we'll put it online and maybe we could do some work with some partners. I know I've spoke to various other organisations. Unfortunately, it's um, school holidays and it's holiday season, so everybody's off, got better off because they're all in like Grand Canary or Lanzarote or somewhere like that. So uh, not in the library watching through the game. So, um, so has anybody got any questions or comments or would like to add anything? Thanks very much. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for coming along and, and hopefully see I you all again. Go ahead when you said you didn't get the phone. Yeah, so I was surprised when somebody told me that it was in the yeah, library. I've got working so. weekends this week. <laughs> 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 so and I say, I say it like it was me, it wasn't really. It was, it was Neil really that did a lot of the work with our funding. Obviously I've been backed by, yeah. by Disability North, by the staff and also the trustees who are watching here today and that's been absolutely great for me. But Neil as an independent artist really did do it in his, in his spare time but had nothing to do with the heart attack so we're all right. <laughs> Don't feel guilty at all. Couldn't help but get that. But thank you very much, and um, yeah, hopefully see you all again. Thank you. Thank you.